Our videos feature voices and visuals created using AI technology, intended for adult entertainment. These depictions should not be mistaken for real celebrities. There is no endorsement, affiliation, or association with the personalities portrayed. These should be seen as nothing more than poor imitations. Viewer discretion is advised when watching this content. Titty sprinkles. previously on Tyranny of Dragons. But I'm heading to Greenest by my good friend and mentor, Anthar Froom. You may have heard of him. Great guy. Champion of good. Slayer of the trolls of Twittar. Lillian falls to the ground unconscious. Then you hear one very clear voice. You will do as I command. He leans in and whispers, kill them. You finally come out of the trance as you stand there with your ax embedded into Sharpen. Half his body slumped on the ground, the other leaning against your blade, his eye fixed on you, and you see the light disappear from it. What, what the fuck is going on? What have I done? He came with us to help right the wrongs he was part of. He was going to help us avenge Bama and sharpen our friends, one of which, don't forget, you drove your fucking axe through. I punch Gormley in the face, and I keep moving forward, saying not another word. Good evening, Donald. Are you ready for this evening's session? Always, boss man. Are the others running late? No, they won't be joining us for this. As you and Joe decided to go your separate ways, I have devised a mini session just for you. A solo one shot, if you like. I thought this would be a good opportunity to try out something I have been working on. Bitching. OK, what are we doing? We'll get to that in due course. But first, have you got your backstory finished? Do I look like the Bidenator? Of course I have. I grew up on the South Continent where the weather is forever warm and inviting. I was adopted as a baby and raised by humans. The Stumps, the most wealthy family of the area, took me in and raised me one of their own. As I grew in size and strength, my family realized I needed someone to help hone my skills and reach my full potential as a mighty warrior. And so I was trained in the ways of combat by a crusading warrior one Tharfroom, he was the one who sent me to Greenest to investigate the rumors of dragon activity. He was my mentor and R, and I even considered him my one and only friend. Excellent. Well, then we shall begin our solo one-shot. You're traveling along the woodland path on a horseback. You have put some distance between yourself and Gurnley, who had gone back to save Groge from the bandits. There is a chill in the air, and you shudder slightly. The weather around these parts is unpleasant to you, and it only makes you think more of the home you left behind to come here. You think of your adopted family, of the long, warm days basking in the sun's rays, of your good friend Anthar, and the many talks and combat training you had with him. A smile crosses your face as you remember a couple of most notable training sessions where you finally bested him in combat. A strong breeze rushes past you, followed by an overcast of shadow from the trees. And your mind suddenly reverts back to the other night, when you were nearly beaten to death by the half-dragon, how you were pushed face first into the ground. Then, in your mind's eye, you see the body of Bama, face down, lifeless in that tunnel, and then Sharpen's half-body, leaning against your axe with his one eye staring unblinkingly at you. I would like a constitution check. You shake off those memories and focus on what's important. Finding the cultist who controlled you and ending his life, you quicken the horse and move on. The shadows of the trees dancing as you move, creating such wild shapes. Every now and then, they seem to form shapes of people. Give me a perception check. As far as you're concerned, these are merely shadows. 
and nothing more. You continue on. A little while later, you come across a stream cutting a path across the track. You'll need to cross it to carry on. I look at the stream and say to myself, that'll be easy on horseback. And this time I won't have to be carrying anyone else or having to worry about anyone else crossing. I would expect nothing less from you, Stomp. What the fuck? You look around, having sworn you just heard the voice of Bama. Give me a perception check. There is no sign of him. You must have imagined it. Give me a strength check to cross the river. Use advantage as you're on horseback. The horse begins walking across, but as you get halfway, it is spooked by something in the water and rears on its back legs, knocking you off it and you fall into the water. The horse bolts onto the other side and out of sight. I stand up and curse that fucking horse from running away. Can I see what spooked it? Roll me a perception check. You can see there is a body just under the surface of the water. I'll fish it out and lay it on the bank. As you reach under the water, you put your hands around the body and notice how it is rather small. You lift it out and shock fills you rapidly as you realize it's Bama's body. What the absolute fuck? How can it be Bama's? We laid him to rest back at the keep. You stand there holding Bama's body, staring at him in disbelief, when suddenly his eyes open. Why are you bothering about me, Stomp? I'm already dead. You keep worrying about yourself. That's all you ever do. I panic and drop him. He falls back into the water. You blink and see that it wasn't Bama's body, but a log. Is my character going crazy? What's with all this spooky-ass ghost shit boss man? That is a good question, Donald. Roll me a constitution check. You can feel your sanity is slipping somewhat as you try to come to terms with what you just saw. Suddenly, you hear the wind pick up around you. On either side of the stream, people are emerging. On one side, you see the blonde hair woman who you knew briefly as Lillian Swift. She looks at you with sunken eyes, and you notice her clothes are stained with blood in the center where a dagger protrudes. On the other stands sharpened fact spitter. His pale skin seems stretched like it's being pulled from the edges to the center, his hands gripping tightly onto his clothes in the middle. He stares at you and opens his arms out wide. His body splits in half and falls to the ground. Roll me a constitution saving throw. You cover your face in anguish not being able to handle what you can see. You start hearing voices. They're coming from every direction. You could have saved us. You're weak. You'll never be a true hero. Selfish you disgrace bastard. the name of Stomp. You should bastard. join us in death. You should join us in death. Selfish bastard. It's your fault. It's all your fault. Selfish bastard. Selfish bastard. Selfish bastard. Selfish bastard. Selfish bastard. Selfish bastard. You disgrace the name of Stomp. You should join us in death. It's your fault. join us in death. It's all your fault. Selfish bastard. End it now. End it now. Swole. The voices stopped. You move your hands away and see a different person standing on the edge of the stream. A Leonin stands with his arms crossed, watching you with a concerned look on his face. I thought that was you. What are you doing? Lantar, what, why are you here? Why is not the correct question. And besides, I asked first, what are you doing swole? I was trying to cross this stream and my horse ran off. So you decided to remain in the stream and cry? I'm not fucking crying. Now answer my question, why are you here? You sent me to this area in your place. I did send you to Greenest, you are correct. But we appear to be in a woodland, and you are standing in a stream, crying and holding your face in your hands. You're not doing a very good job, Swole. Have you forgotten the way of the warrior so soon? Did I fail as a mentor? I have not forgotten what you taught me, Ontha. I am a warrior of the South. Then recite the warrior's oath, so I know that I have not wasted my years on you. In the face of adversity, I stand tall. With courage in my heart, I heed the call. Never shall I retreat, never shall I yield. In every battle, my strength revealed. To those in need, my hand I extend. As a warrior, protector, until the end. With honor and valor, I fight the good fights. Guided by justice, my beacon of light. Through darkness and peril, I'll forge my way. For the weak and oppressed, I'll have my say. With each step forward, my spirit ignites. In the name of righteousness, I'll champion their rights. 
This oath I swear with blade in hand to defend the innocent across the land. Forever bound to this warrior's creed, I'll stand firm in word and deed. So perfectly recited but poorly executed. Have you not abandoned those you traveled with to follow in your own selfish desires? I, I must have my revenge. I must prove that I'm not some weak-minded fool. They can fend for themselves. Then I have indeed failed you, swole. The path of the Southern warrior is not about seeking revenge, but to fight against injustice and protect those that cannot protect themselves. If you cannot stand by your oath, can you even fight? As he says this, the waters around you churn. A serpent rises from under the water and hisses at you. Roll for initiative. The serpent lunges with a bite attack, but you manage to successfully move out of its way. It raises its head high. You're up. I'm going to go into a rage and use reckless attack. I'll take an almighty swing at it. Your attack hits. What's the damage? Sixteen total. The serpent hisses angrily and slinks back into the water. Anthar uncrosses his arms. One hit does not a warrior make. It was enough to take care of that snake. And what about the rest of them? The water churns again, and this time five more serpents emerge around you, each one attempting to grapple you. Roll me a strength check. You manage to throw them off, but you feel even more wrap themselves around your legs under the water. They bring you down, and you can still hear Anthar's voice clearly as if he is standing next to you underwater. You cannot do this alone, Swall. You need them as much as they need you. The serpent's grips become tighter, and you feel the crushing sensation in your chest as you slowly sink into darkness. Remember the ways I taught you. Don't stray from the path of the Southern Warrior. You're standing in the stream, its waters flowing around you, the sounds of birds chirping in the distance and the gentle breeze brushes your face. I get the fuck out of the stream back the way I came in. As you do, you hear the sound of hooves behind you. You look back and see your horse has returned. It crosses over the stream and stands, waiting. I give it a pat and get back on it. I look around to see if I can see Anthar, the snakes, or anything out of the ordinary. Everything seems as it should be. I sit there for a moment, staring past the stream. I get you soon enough. But remembering my oath, I'll turn the horse around and head back to the others. Very good, Donald. We shall end the mini-session one shot there. So, other than try to scare the crap out of my character, what was that all about? What do you think it was about? I think you were railroading the fuck out of me. And to be quite frank, that was pretty bullshit. Simply part of the campaign, Donald. You were presented with an event, and you chose to go back to the others. Uh, perhaps your character is understanding their role within this story a little more. Perhaps you yourself are understanding more that you do not simply leave the group unless it is to leave the campaign as some of the others have. I'll let you dwell on these thoughts. For now, we continue onward. Swolnald reaches the spot where Grog was taken, and you can see Gurmless's horse tethered to a tree. There is a noticeable trail made that leads into the woods. You follow, and next session, I'll let you know when you rejoin the others. Until then, Donald, good evening.